Hello chemists, today we're going to work on some heating and cooling curve whiteboard practice problems. So if you were in class and it was a normal year, we would be sitting in our desks with whiteboards and practicing these problems together. So I encourage you to get a piece of paper out, pause the video, try these problems on your own. This is going to lead you to problem solving skills. These are the type of problem solving skills that you're going to use in physics next year and all sorts of science classes in the future. So do yourself a favor and really try to work on the problems yourself as opposed to just watching me do them. Okay, so let's review. And so far we've just talked about water, but these formulas and strategies can be used for any substance that you pick. So let's remind ourselves that each part of the graph has a different formula and each part of the graph has a different constant. So if you see the parts that are slanted here, here, and here, those are temperature change sections. Therefore, you use the one with the temperature change in it. So this particular one, remember I told you, you're going to see the specific heat capacity written as S and as C. So we're going to do a few problems with each type so that you don't get confused based on which constant that they use. S and C both stand for specific heat capacity. So let's put that over here. S equals C. There is a difference between them, but we won't learn that this year or next year. So for our purposes, they're going to be used interchangeably. Now let's go over the flat parts of the graph. The flat parts of the graph here and here are not temperature changed. The temperature is not changing in those sections. Therefore, the kinetic energy is not changing. The potential energy is changing. Potential energy change is when the phase is changing. Okay, let's just say we're dealing with water. We're all familiar with water, so we'll pretend we're dealing with water just for this purpose. If we're dealing with water, then this would be ice or solid water at zero degrees Celsius. This point right here would be liquid water at zero degrees Celsius. So the molecules are rearranging themselves and positioning themselves to have a different potential energy in the particular section right here that is our substance's melting point. Same thing up here. This would be liquid water at 100 degrees Celsius. And this right here would be water vapor or gas or steam at 100 degrees Celsius. Remember that this takes a lot more energy to vaporize. Phase change takes a lot more energy because liquids and solids are very similar in potential energy or arrangement, but liquids and gases are very different in potential energy or arrangement. Now let's go over the constants. So all of the slanted parts, you're using Q equals SM delta T or Q equals M cat. In every one of these slanted parts. Now let's talk about the constants. In this section down here, we're talking about a solid. So you will use the specific heat capacity for the solid, which is a value that is a reference value that you can look up. It's going to be different for each substance. Because it's um, M, C, delta T, 
the units are going to be joules per gram degrees Celsius. That's going to give us an answer for heat in joules, and we'll cancel out grams and degrees Celsius with mass and temperature. Let's go to this section right here where we're melting. You're going to use the enthalpy of fusion for whatever substance that you use. It's going to be given to you, a lot of times it's given to you in joules per gram, but it also might be given to you in joules per mole. If it's given to you in joules per mole, you're going to have to change grams to moles, so on and so forth. So you got to pay attention to the units. This is where the enthalpy of fusion is used, and it's the only place the enthalpy of fusion is used. This section right here is a temperature change section, so you're going to use the Q equals MCAT formula. And you're going to use the specific heat capacity for a liquid. This is the only place you'll use the constant specific heat capacity for a liquid. And it should be given to you in joules per gram degree Celsius. Again, pay attention to the units. Convert if you need to. This section right here uses the enthalpy of vaporization. So this is the phase change. It'll be given to you in joules per gram or joules per mole. Remember, each substance has a different variable, and each section has a different variable, but you do not need to memorize any of them. You can look them each up. And last but last not least, here is the specific heat capacity for a gas that is going to be different also. Should be given to you in joules per gram degree Celsius. If you need to convert units, we do know how to do that. So let's see what a problem might look like. How much heat is needed to change 22.0 grams of water from minus 14 degrees Celsius to 77 degrees Celsius? So the first thing you do is make yourself a little blank heating and cooling curve if you are a picture person. This has three different sections because you're going to map out a starting point, minus 14 degrees Celsius, and an ending point at 77 degrees Celsius. Every time you reach a curve, so now we have to change directions. This is one part of the problem. Then we're going to melt it. This is the second part of the problem. And then we're going to raise the temperature of a liquid and that's the third part of the problem. So you will figure out each section, and then you will add them up. This section right here is going to be a Q equals MCAT. This section right here, or number two, is going to be a Q equals enthalpy of fusion times mass. And this section right here, number three, is going to be a Q equals MCAT again. And this will be water, and this will be ice. Okay, we have three steps, three things we're going to add together. Now let's plug in the numbers. In this particular one, they used 333. Remember, I told you you're going to see a little bit different numbers based on um, where you're at. Those are pressure dependent. So you might see 332, you might see 333, you might see 334. But 333 is what we're going to use here for the enthalpy of fusion. Then let's go, so you calculate this independently, and then let's go and calculate the temperature change ones. The solid 
Again, you're going to see a little bit different of numbers based on um, where you're at. Might be 2.03, might be 2.04, might be 2.05. Just use whatever they give you. If you looked up a reference number on Google, I would always accept any reasonable Googled answer or what the constant is. So notice the mass is the same for all of these. The one that can be confusing is the temperature change because in this section, we can only go up 14 degrees before we have to start changing our phase. So the temperature change is only going to be for this section and it's going to be 14 degrees Celsius. The temperature change here can only go from zero to 77 degrees. So our temperature change is going to be 77 degrees Celsius. Once you get all of those calculated, we're next going to add the steps together. We're going to round to three significant figures. And if you notice, if you round to three significant figures, it would be 150400 uh, zero, zero joules. And you're like, oh, that's only two significant figures. So you either have to use scientific notation or in this case, change it to kilojoules, and then you can answer in the right number of sig figs. Okay, let's do a, an additional problem. How much heat must be removed to change nine grams of wa uh, 34 degrees water to freeze it? So we first have to reduce the temperature of water from 34 degrees to zero degrees. So that's a temperature change of 34 degrees. Our mass will remain constant throughout the entire problem, 9.00 grams. We're going to use the C value for water, which is 4.184. This one you usually get agreement on. And then after we get water down to zero degrees Celsius, we have to change zero degrees Celsius water to zero degrees Celsius ice. So that's going to use the enthalpy of fusion. And then our mass, which is always going to be 9.00 grams in this problem. So after you calculate the individual of each step, we're going to remember that we're going to remove heat this time. So removing heat is heat leaving the system. We know that to turn liquid to solid, we have to remove heat from the system. So these values will now be negative. And then you add them up. Changing to kilojoules if you're asked to. Remember, there's a thousand joules in a kilojoule. So if you're changing from joules to kilojoules, you move it over. There's three zeros in a thousand. So you're going to move it over three decimal spots. And your answer is going to be negative because this is an exothermic process. Problem number three, starting with a 13.0 gram ice cube at 0, 0.00 degrees Celsius, how much heat is needed to completely boil it? So you're starting at zero degrees ice and you're going to 100 degrees steam. So you're going to go through two phase changes. First, you're going to melt it and then you're going to boil it. And then you also have to change the temperature of the liquid water from zero to 100 degrees Celsius. Three different sections of the graph, three different problems that you will add together. Now, this time we're adding heat to ice to change it to gas. So these are going to be positive. Using your variables in the correct spots, now let's pay attention to like 333 to change solid to liquid, but 
2260 to change liquid to gas. So that's the phase change that's going to require most energy. Mass remains the same through all of them. I use the correct constant for the correct section. And then I will add them together. If I want to change joules to kilojoules, I move the decimal point over three because 1,000 joules is one kilojoule. It's also helpful to remember a kilojoule, anything with kilo is a thousand, is a bigger unit than a joule. So a big unit gets a small number. So if you're changing joules to kilojoules, your number will become smaller because your unit is become larger by a factor of three zeros. Let's do one where we're changing liquid to steam because this is where the temperature change can be confusing. So I start off with liquid water at zero degrees Celsius. Remember, don't confuse, this is ice at zero degrees Celsius. And this is liquid water at zero degrees Celsius. So I'm going to heat my water up by 100 degrees first. Then I'm going to boil my water And then I'm going to continue to heat my water up from 100 degrees to 145 degrees. This is the most commonly made mistake. You can't go from zero to 145 in one problem. You first have to go from zero to 100, and then you have to go from 100 to 145. So the temperature change there is going to be 145 minus 100 or 45 degrees Celsius. Plug in our numbers. We should be used to the constants that we're using by now. The one for liquid water, the one for enthalpy of vaporization, and the one for steam. And then we're going to add them all up. Again, we're adding heat to get liquid water to change to steam. So this is a positive or an endothermic process to get that change to happen. Hopefully you tried these problems a little bit yourself as you went along. And I'm going to also post in Google Classroom some practice problems for you to continue